All right, guys, welcome back to the Canadian Real Estate Homefront Podcast. This is episode 46. We're in a little new place here today because I've been yelling at Brooke because we need to get some content done. <laughs> <laughs> We've got fans to impress. And, uh, yeah, we just have the one angle. So if you are on YouTube, you're probably wondering what's going on. But we're just in a temporary location right now just to get some Sorry, content out to your guys. Don't yeah. hate us. Don't hate us. We I'm actually, we're actually in my office um, right now. So this is where I work from. And our studio is in Toronto. Yeah. And the last pod, it was a snowstorm and I canceled 20 minutes before saying, I'm not going. Yeah, that <laughs> is true. You did do that. I am a bad driver. It was like driver. the only snowstorm we had all year too. <laughs> so I was like, I have an excuse <laughs> not to drive to, into downtown Toronto with the gardener going down to two lanes. Yeah. So. You hear about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of right where For I live. three years, the gardener, our yeah. major highway going into in Toronto, Toronto and yeah. out of Toronto yeah. is shutting down to two lanes. Yep. They and, don't they don't think much over there. And there's so many nights where the major league sports teams play all in one night. Yeah. If you're going to a basketball game or a Leafs game, yeah. even because um, baseball's starting up. Yeah. Yeah. And even um the soccer games, like it's pretty it's not directly downtown Toronto, but it's TFC's like at exhibition. So you yeah. have to pass yeah. exhibition to get to Scotia. Yeah. It's kind of like you have Jameson and Lakeshore as a cutoff, and then you have Spadina right. after that. Oh and they're, I think gosh. they're, I think they're closing Spadina and Jameson. What? I think they're. Yeah, that's they... the one they're closing. Like they're just doing some work there right now. I think, um, but they're getting they're they have to close one lane to do work. But anyways, don't quote us on this. But there's <sighs> Toronto is just more traffic this summer. Like especially since it's crazy COVID, how we're... it's been crazy busy. Yeah, we're among the top um, worst traffic cities in the world, Toronto. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, then you look at the population of Toronto compared to major cities. <laughs> yeah. It's just the infrastructure, like shutting just, down the garden yeah, is going to be not, a problem. They just did not think about this very well. But speaking of Toronto, <sighs> I posted this, uh, I'm doing these new photos that you guys seem to like on Instagram and it just kind of mm-hmm. gives like a headline with two photos. Yeah. And there was one with Olivia Chow, who's the mayor of Toronto. And she was, there were, they're thinking about doing a rain tax. So, rain tax. so yeah if it rains on your property and it hits a hard surface and it goes into the sewer they're going to decide how much of like hard surface is on because like if it's grass then it'll absorb the rain but if it's a hard surface like concrete or anything like that it'll run off into the sewers so they want to charge residents a tax on the on, on <laughs> the amount of rain like it's honestly theater at this point it, it was like <laughs> what is going on? like how do you think people aren't going to be up in arms? I think they've come out with sort of like a clarification of what they meant because it was like they were getting so much heat. I don't even I can't it. even wrap my head around it. Uh, it's it's unreal. I think they're and then people were commenting like this is already in like uh, Kitchener for commercial buildings and stuff like that. Like there's a tax on the runoff from rain because you make the surface mm. not grass. You make it hard surfaces. So it obviously the water needs to go somewhere. So like they just hiked. Taxes and it's a different tax. It's not included in why you pay property tax. No, it would. Yeah, it would be a new implementation implementation of a tax. So you property tax just went up ten percent in Toronto already, which Olivia Chow <sighs> said she was going to do in uh, in her campaign. So like that shouldn't really be a surprise, but people mm-hmm. were still up in arms about it. Mm-hmm. Um, then you have double land transfer, and now they might add a rain tax, which I don't even know what you call that. I guess like maybe a rain runoff tax on your wow. property wow. but like if you have rain barrels do you get a tax break maybe I don't <laughs> <Rain> know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so that was pretty wild but uh yeah just to touch on that and, and toronto and then to pivot into uh something else that's crazy yeah i am speechless i know i'm pretty speechless as well hmm. but uh trudeau came out the federal government's coming out so obviously everyone knows that trudeau's polling numbers are down pretty heavy right now so he just came out recently and he said that they're doing this renter's bill of rights. So they have like a few things that they're implementing. So it's pretty funny because we posted about this and everyone's like, what about landlord yeah. bill of rights? Like yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. the ones getting taken advantage of. And I, I actually posted a photo about this to get a tenant out right now. And the tenant landlord board who's in arrears, it takes over a year mm-hmm. to get them out. And then even for a tenant to get a maintenance order, mm-hmm. it takes over 400 days. So it's going both ways. Like the tenant landlord is so backed up. And a big reason for it was during COVID, they took away online, sorry, they took away in-person hearings. So you'd have to used to go in, in person, mm-hmm. and then there would be um, people in the hallways who worked at the tenant landlord board and like, say, you're my landlord and, yeah. and I'm the tenant. Yeah. They'd be like, hey, what if we figured out something here right now? Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, so the it actually used Got to take it. 30 days for somebody to get out in 2018. Interesting. You would think with the um, like increase ability to do things online, it would increase productivity, yeah. not decrease productivity. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought too. I was like, huh. couldn't they just bang out these hearings online? But like yeah. you have people not showing up. You have people like not mm. like hello, does your Zoom work? No, you know, right. you know when that happens. So then it's like also because there's a couple of solutions that come to mind. Okay, well, if they're so backed up, then like we are taxed high in every every way, right? So tax dollars needs to go toward actually being able to help these systems, mm-hmm. right? So increase people's, the amount of people that work for them or simply instead of that, which I don't even like that option, create a system where, not so many issues come up. Here's the kicker. They have more funding and more people working there since 2018 when times were 30 days yeah. for the orders. Maintenance orders were like 40 days. Yeah, yeah. And to get someone out was 30 days. And why that was so good if someone didn't pay in 30 days because you had last month's rent. So you would never be mm. worried about paying it. Yeah. But now they have more funding and more people working there. And wait times are 10x what they were before COVID interesting like what what are we missing missing here like what's going on it doesn't make any sense so the tenant landlord board in ontario specifically is just an absolute disaster so what happens in other countries where if you don't pay your rent um it depends too like i think in calgary it's very quick that's why a lot of is it very quick because there's not as many disputes because there's less people or there's more people that are efficiently putting through these requests and coming up with solutions or is their system just better where not as as much comes up i think if you are in arrears a sheriff will go there and take you out like in in buffalo where my uncle owns units he's like if someone doesn't pay me the sheriff's there like and then the you're next out. Day? yeah there's no you can't there's no reason why you can't pay rent you have to pay rent like there can't be any and and realistically when you think about it like, what is a reason why you can't pay rent? Like, you don't have the money, right? Yeah. Like, say you're, like, away. Like, you can still e-transfer. There's right. still so many ways of getting rent there. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's why my uncle and other people go to different countries or different mm-hmm. provinces. That's why I think Calgary, too, has had so, an influx of investors as and well. And then what happens? So, the sheriff kicks you, takes you out. And then it's like, okay, locks are changed and you're just on the street. Yeah, I think you have a certain amount of days to claim your stuff. Mm-hmm. to go pick up everything and if you don't do it after that then you can just throw their stuff out or mm. sell it i guess i don't know but in commercial it's like that like in commercial yeah. if you don't pay they, they change the locks and yeah. then you have a certain amount of time to come get your stuff and yeah. if you don't get your stuff they can just get rid of it yeah isn't it crazy that if you as a landlord your tenant didn't pay you rent for a couple months and you're like f this i'm gonna go change the locks you change the locks you tell them hey i'm gonna get all of your stuff paid for and put into a storage locker for you nice the tenant can actually call the cops and say the landlord um, is locking me out of my own house, even though that tenant is not paying and yeah. the landlord is at fault when the landlord says, hey, you're not paying, but I'm going to be nice. I'm going to move all your stuff to storage. I'm going to move it for you. Here's where it is. It's paid for, but the locks are changed. You can no longer live here because I have to pay a mortgage and you're not paying rent. You're yeah. the one in trouble. You're the one in trouble. The, the flip side is that, say I lived in a place, and this is what I would do if I lived in a place. I live in a place, there's a leak or something needs to get fixed and they're not fixing it, right? Because that's what the maintenance orders are for. Right. Like That's why those are so backed up. Yeah. I wouldn't personally stop paying rent. Mm-hmm. I would send my landlord a message and email and say, hey, this is the quote for the cost. Yeah. I'm, I'm going yeah. to hire it Me and too. then I'm going to take that off Me my too. rent if That's you're not going to do it yourself. Right. That's and usually like as a landlord, like you're a landlord, I'm a landlord. Yeah. I would say, yeah, of course. That yeah. Thank you for doing that. But if it was you or I, we would have it done. It's but so I'm just funny because <laughs> I've actually done that so many times for like little things. And my tenants come to me. I'm like, can you just like do it and just I know, pay me I'm, Yeah, less? I'm so busy. Yeah, I've, yeah. I'll send somebody there if it's if there's a problem that needs a specialist. But if it's just very minor, I'm like, okay, yeah. you do it. And like, don't be like I supply them with a lawnmower <laughs> and because they do the grass and everything or broke or something. And then I'm like, oh, I have to go to Home Depot and buy a lawnmower. I'm like, wait, can you just like go buy a lawnmower? And just get the one you want yeah, and then take and it off rent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Makes my life easier. And they're like, OK, and then they're like happy to do yeah, it. Yeah, If they're happy to do it, then you can't complain. But yeah. uh, anyways, we went on a tangent there. But yeah, Justin Trudeau introduced this like Bill of Rights. So 
in my opinion, it's just like a last Hail Mary at trying to get votes because he's just so far behind in the polls at this point. It's so bad. But um, basically, one of the points was that tenants who pay rent, it goes towards their credit score. So you can boost Good. your credit score. Yeah, Good. which I don't think is even a bad thing. I was yeah. like, oh, that's because, a great thing. Because you know what? I've, I've heard people even talk about um, somebody co-signing a lease. They're like, no, I can't go on because it'll hurt my credit score if you don't pay or something. It's like, it really like it almost doesn't no, unless you doesn't. like file yeah. and like actually go after them. Yeah. But if somebody's late or misses payments, unless it really escalates, mm-hmm. you being on a co-sign on a lease right now, it, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it really doesn't. And also, like, wouldn't it be a good thing too? Because you could check the history of someone paying rent mm-hmm. somewhere else. Like, that's mm-hmm. where I thought, too. Like, yeah. you could show another landlord, totally. like, hey, maybe I don't make the most money. But look, I yeah. paid this for five years straight and right. I was on time every single time. Right. So, yeah, very I think, good. I think that has has good potential. And then another How one. How are they going to add it? I don't know yet. This was just like him yeah. coming out. Like, he did like this Instagram video and yeah. he was just talking about it. And another one was um, you have to. Sh- this one's so stupid. You have to because. When you have tenant turnover, prices go astronomical, right? Like if you have someone living in a place for five years and then they finally move out, yeah. like you're getting 30, 40, yeah, 50% yeah. more. Yeah. So you have to show that tenant who's moving in what it used to rent for, which like doesn't make any sense. Like Why? A, you can look back at the MLS system, like if you're yeah. using a realtor yeah. or you can just use House Sigma and it'll show yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, I know everywhere cares? doesn't have House because Sigma. Because what is that going to accomplish though? Nothing because like a tenant's going to be like, oh, look at what happened to the economy no prices went up yeah. 50% on, yeah. on rentals. Great. Thanks and then for if that tenant said, well, you used to rent it for three grand and now you're charging me five grand. I'm only willing to pay four. He'd be like, well, no, because the next person is going to be like, true. I'll still take it for five. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. I don't yeah. care what he paid. I don't right? care what he paid in 2017 or 2016. So. Yeah. Well, rent prices are very, like I look, I look every day in Oakville. Um, and like what you get for like 8,500 is like, I'm like, it's not even like, that nice. Yeah. Like a house, right? I mean, we're talking a house, not a townhouse, not a semi, like a good house with a good backyard and like above 2,000 square feet. Rent Starts is expensive. At six grand. Yeah. Goes up from there. Then your, your semis and your townhouses are still at minimum 30, minimum 35 for a three bedroom, mm-hmm. um, up to about 45. And then your houses, if it's unrenovated and original, you're at five grand plus. And then if there's any sort of renovations and, and it's nice, if you're at like six grand plus, it's, wild that is wild. and the, okay i'm talking south of the qew though too so yeah. north of for those who don't north know it's, it, it's more of a desirable yeah. area yeah but uh, yeah like when you go north of the qew you're getting more um of the newer developments so houses are closer together there's yeah. more listings like yeah. i remember the post road one remember i had that one yeah there was i remember sending my client there's like 40 listings mm. of the same caliber uh we did get it rented out though thank god we got some great tenants moving in there yeah, but yeah. just more competition like especially right. in these northern areas that have yeah. so many rentals coming up and mm-hmm. and different things like that so yeah you see them all go up at once too so it's like like for example the building in hamilton i have a lot of clients that bought in pre-construction right so all of them we have to put up for lease but then the rest of the building because it's the smaller unit so a lot of the building is investors not end users so mm. there's like 50 listings at the same time. So how do you stand out as a landlord that needs to rent their unit against 50 others, right? Yeah. So it's challenging. You can't be overpriced. You have to be in line. You don't have to be underpriced, but there's things that you can do. But yeah, I guess it, it is supply and demand, but I look yeah. every day just back to that point of, you know, a, some of them worth 3,800 I saw and now they're asking 7,500. The difference from 2017 to now. Yeah, it's crazy. Even in when we were on that podcast, we went on the, the Ottawa yeah. real estate podcast. Yeah. I think it's called. We might be butchering it, but even they were saying like townhouses, like not downtown Ottawa, which I don't know Ottawa at all. We're like, we're like yeah, it's twenty seven hundred. Even like I was like twenty seven hundred in Ottawa. Not that Ottawa is undesirable, but like yeah, yeah. I, I don't know a lot of people who live in Ottawa. But yeah. I was just, I guess, rental prices everywhere are just up, up and to the right, as they say. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's. It's insane. It is crazy. It's still uh, cheaper than than to buy, though. So there's that. Yeah, that that's 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 the thing, right? I, on that podcast too, I was saying to own a condo in Toronto, like a one bedroom, it'll run you about four grand a month, and to rent the same one, it'll run you twenty five hundred. Yeah, exactly. So it's an extra. But there's, have you seen the um, difference between one bedroom condo units and two bedroom? It's so different because before, like this building, I represent a lot of units in Oakville. A one bedroom. This is back couple three years ago probably one bedrooms are about 1975 and two bedrooms were 23 to 24 now 
one bedroom is like 23 and two bedrooms are like 32. I'm like, whoa, they're the difference, right? Yeah. Because two people want to split the rent instead of one person paying 23. Like a two bedroom, two, people two bath. Pay. Yeah, yeah. Two pay, right? yeah. But two bed, two bath versus one bed, one bath. It's not like $500 difference anymore, which always was the case, even less. Yeah. Right. Now it's a thousand or, or more. Yeah. It's a lot more. You're 100% right. So mm -hmm. anyways, okay, let's move on to inflation. Mm -hmm. That came out. So we're a little bit behind, we know, but Canadian inflation cools as demand drops. So basically what happened was um, Canadian inflation slowed to 2.8%. So we're in the realm, like we're close. And we include mortgage interest costs in that inflation reading. So mm -hmm. it being at 2.8% and our rates still being crazy high, I mean, we're really in the realm. Yeah. And so like what, what this kind of means, right? Because the U.S., their inflation actually accelerated. It was like 3.2 or 3.3. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Canada, it decreased. The States is a lot more productive than us. Mm -hmm. So you have people who don't, who have 30-year mortgages. Um, you have better jobs there. They have better GDP, better GDP per capita. Mm -hmm. So people are still out there spending. Yeah. So what's really happening is the Canadian economy is really contracting. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what this inflation reading is showing. So I thought since the U.S. inflation went up, Canadian inflation might tick up too. Yeah. Uh, in terms of rate cuts this year, they're now pricing one in in June. In June. And like we said at the beginning, I'm pretty sure I was there. I said two rate cuts, one in June and one at Christmas. So or yeah, one I'm, summer, maybe I said one at, one at the end of summer. Yeah, summer and winter is yeah. typical slower seasons that would call for a rate cut rather than spring or fall. Right. And now with the inflation being coming down again, yeah. that might that might happen because there was a while there that was like, oh, I don't know. If, yeah. I don't know if it's going to happen until the end of the year. There was two things in the inflation reading that I still scratch my head about, though. And it was cell phone bills came down and air transit came down. And all I know is my cell phone bill is incredibly high. Mm -hmm. And trying to book a flight is insane. It's so expensive. So I don't see how either of those came down or Where, what measure, my <laughs> measurement they're looking at. My cell phone bill is astronomical. I actually need to look into that. You reminded me. I just don't even understand why every single month it's like four and a buck. I always think when I call and I get this deal and I'm like, oh, finally, my cell phone bill is going to be good. Like, fine. Yeah, I don't even, I don't even Then know I get the it's... bill and I'm like, what? I don't <laughs> how even did get I get it. here? I, yeah. I just, I see all these bills come in. They're on auto payments and I like look at them for a second. I'm like, my little cousin know. in the States with no job always has the Two iPhones better than me. Yeah. Unlimited. She's streaming. She's yeah, like, why yeah. would I use the internet? I can use my data. I'm like, yeah. what is going? What is wrong with this? Yeah, picture? doesn't even need Wi-Fi. Oh man, Canada, the land of oligopolies. So, Ugh. anyways, so I guess yeah. The last thing here is uh, interest rates cuts over the course of the year, likely over the course of the year. Bank of Canada. So the Bank of Canada released its latest summary of deliberations this week. In a welcoming turn of events, it has finally given Canadians a clue about uh, rate cuts to come. Although the Bank of Canada is maintaining, as it has for some time, that it's still too early to consider lowering the policy rate, it also said that recent inflation data suggests monetary policy is working largely as expected. So yeah, high rates are working, the economy's contracting, inflation's coming down. But um, it's really key to know that like when you see inflation at 2.8%, that's what it, it was to compare to last year. So mm -hmm. like you have to build the inflation right. from years to come. So like. Right. Food prices are never like you see it coming down unless we have deflation, which a negative reading. Yeah. Food prices are never going to come down to what they once were like the right. old Canada. Right. We're not going to see that. We're like you right. go to the grocery store and you can get away with spending 150 bucks. Like, yeah, no. Exactly. Now you get a few things. Like I'll get one bag of groceries. and It's a right. hundred bucks. And I'm like, right. oh, my God. Like, yeah. So, yeah. Although inflation's coming down, it's still expensive to live here. Right. Because like a lot of the damage has already been done. Yeah. So keep in mind 2.8%, although it was higher in last month's reading, the last couple of readings, 2.8% still means we're still growing at that rate. So remember when inflation was 8 point something percent, like a lot of the damage has been done to set a new benchmark price. And now all that 2.8% means is that that benchmark price is now growing at 2.8%. Yeah. Right. So it doesn't mean that those benchmark prices are going to essentially come down. Yeah, just, yeah. It, it, and mortgage interest cost is still high, although it did came down. I think rent prices came down a bit too in the reading. So mm -hmm. those are both good things. So hopefully we can get back to that 2% target. But I still think, yeah. I still think like they're talking about, and it's so funny, right? Like you, it's based on polling too. Is yeah. that all of a sudden like the liberals are just changing their tone on. Do you see how many like things people just like 
spit out like we're going to do a rain tax. Uh, we're we're going to do this and this and it's just people just trying to glob at anything to try to solve problems they think is yeah the major problem and then it, somebody else over there is saying something different. It's just it's hard to follow. I, it is I hard to stopped follow. really. It's, it's it's political theater. It's it's hard just to understand. And it's like now they're saying they're going to put a cap on non permanent residents, so that population will come down. And then they're they're capping ninety six percent of the international student like the allowance is going to like actual colleges, not like strip mall colleges. Mm. So like those are going to close. Yeah. So like this debacle of like, cause Canada passed 41 million people in a hurry. Yeah. So I remember when it was at like 34, mm-hmm. 35, yeah. like yeah. not too long ago. Yeah. I, I remember when it was 30 million. Yeah. I, yeah. Sometimes I think I'm like, Canada has 30 think, million I and the States th- has 300. And me, now I'm like, me oh my too. God. That's yeah. so funny. The 30 million and 300. Yeah, me yeah. too. That's hilarious. Yeah. I think the States is at 330,000 and we're at. 330,000. Sorry. Three hundred thirty million. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that would not be a productive economy. And then <laughs> we're at about we're at forty one million, oh, above forty one million now. Mm-hmm. So, and that's like what's accounted for. But yeah, it's um, mm-hmm. it's rolling though. Like we're we have an election this year in the states, mm-hmm. and then there's next year we have the Canadian election. Yeah, which it looks like conservatives are going to win a majority because yeah. I think everyone is just so sick and tired. Like yeah. I don't know if it's my algorithm that feeds me this now, but it's just like sad stories of Canadians who like just can't get by anymore. It breaks my heart. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see it all the time. I opened mm. Reddit just while I was sitting here waiting for you to get set up. And the first one that came in is I'm choosing to leave Canada. It's no, like not what I thought it was. It's not serving me. But then you get a lot of comments because Reddit is worldwide of people in Eastern Europe, Europe, where I guess this person was planning to go and they're like, it's not any better here. And then people chiming in from other countries and it's like, well, what do you go to a third world country? Does that Mm -hmm. make your life better? Or like, yes. Okay. Maybe your money goes further now, but does that make your life better? And then there's, um, other people in Europe commenting about their problems. And it's like, they, they said actually, actually New Zealand is the only other place (laughs) that I would go to and is essentially good. But then you even look at the prices in Australia and New Zealand. Like Australia's crazy. I know. So every, every country is going to have its own. And Australia has open auctions. So like when you want a house, yeah, I watched one on YouTube, you go to the front door, like outside the front door and there's a guy there and he's like, how much do you want? You kind of like, isn't that insane? Yeah, it was insane. (laughs) I was like, what is going on? How is this a thing? I feel like you could be one of those guys. It's like, you know, the ones that talk to us, like, do I hear, do I hear 400,000? Do I hear 400, 1,000? Do I hear 405, 410? (laughs) But they talk so fast. God, that'd be a good job. That's <laughs> so You're saying funny. I'm a good negotiator. Okay, sounds good. That's hilarious. Okay, give us Brooke's take on the market right now. And this is just specific to yeah. Hamilton and surrounding areas. So it was March break and now we're coming up to Easter. So because a couple podcasts back, I'm like, I am so busy. I'm seeing so much more activity. And it's still a lot um, on my plate of things that are kind of moving and shaking and a lot of listings and people coming to see them. But in terms of sales... Um, it's just, I think just for the sake of it being March break and Easter, it's kind of just like stalled a little bit for me anyways. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of listings right now. I usually am pretty good at keeping like listings flowing. Like I do not want to be one of those agents that has a listing for 40 days on the market. Like you got to be on every single one of them and you know, don't ignore your seller. yeah, Yeah. And do things as per what the market's seeing, change things, be creative all that good stuff. So the listings that I have lately, I have about 18 of them, um, have been a little bit slower these past couple of weeks, but understandably so March break, people go away. Now we're approaching Easter, but I think after next Tuesday, I think activity will continue, um, to pick up. Mm-hmm. Um, still not a lot of really, really good inventory for, um, a lot of the buyers that I'm working with it. See the opportunity of it being a high rate of, um, high rate market, but prices for the multifamily are way below what they were in the last couple of years. Um, and we can have you cash flowing or breaking even, um, in these high rates. So, but there's not a lot of great inventory. I've seen prices edge upwards in, in that area of real estate. We're still way down from COVID levels. Like it just tells you like the absurdity of COVID and just how much people just buy payments. Like it's crazy. Like I'll see things all the time. It's like you buy a payment because yeah. nobody understands the value of a million dollar house. It's like, what does that mean? And yeah. that translates to X 
monthly, that means, yeah, I can afford a million dollar house or not. Yeah. Right. So I had guys lock in and like the COVID low and they bought a house for 800 K 20% down. What they're telling me their mortgage is 2,200 bucks a month. <laughs> I'm like, you must have just Sweet. got an, an insane rate. Sweet. Um, but yeah, they actually just bought, um, again, they were like, we, we like that, that there's high rates right now because we we're looking at right. what we bought. Um, and we want a detached home. So they're going to rent out their townhouse now. And then mm-hmm. they, they just bought a detached home over the weekend. Super nice. excited for them. So Interesting. yeah, that, that's what that, people are like, who's buying right now? They are like people like that who are like, I can yeah. move up. Right. I can actually, as opposed to during COVID, like that right. house would have been, they bought it for under one, two, probably would have been one, five. And if you could port that mortgage, then then there you go. Yeah, that would be the best. Well, they're they're, they're going to save that one. So, yeah, yeah. If you could port it, it would be nice. Right. Yeah. So because some people say, well, no, I have such a low mortgage, I'm not breaking it to sell and buy something else. But if you do have equity in there in your home, throwing on a HELOC if you need to make up the down payment can sometimes work. You got to be creative, and that's an yeah, easy you got to be creative. Say. You can't yeah. just slap on a HELOC, you right? But um, it's high the HELOC like home equity line of credit interest rates, um, but while prices are low, sometimes it's smart to even put one on if you do have that equity, but keep your low interest rate mortgage so you don't break that um, to be able to refinance. So if yeah. you refinance and pull out money, it changes the entire mortgage on that house. Leave the mortgage, use a home equity line of credit option instead, and then you can, it's like a revolving, so you can use it, pay it off at any time. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. To touch on that, OSFI came out with um, this new rule. So they wanted it so... If you want to get a new lender, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, 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 this one's crazy to me. But if you so want dumb. to get a new lender because you want to shop around for rates because you're coming up to your renewal, what they would do would, they wouldn't allow that to happen because you'd have to re-qualify yourself at that new rate in that house. But if you stay with the same lender, you don't have to re-qualify. So then the competition bureau is like, you should allow people to have competition. They're already in the house. Why would you try and kick right, them out? Right. And anyways, they said no to it. So RBC just took over HSBC. So mm-hmm. like they have more market share, even more now than they mm-hmm. did before. But yeah, it's just another thing where, you know, you're stuck at TD or you're stuck at CIBC yeah. at your renewal. So you're basically forced to take a rate where maybe you could get three percent. Sometimes though, lower. like I guess well, on renewal, the banks don't put you through a requalification process you just kind of auto renew Mm. um typically unless there's a reason they need to look into you um but how would that bank not know that you'd qualify for something else because usually they're pretty like your renewal interest rate is pretty on par with what other banks are offering you because they're they want to keep your business they don't know that maybe you can't qualify at rbc because your job's changed the current bank wouldn't know that yeah so to stick with some people i've even gone back to my renewal offer letter and been like whoa i'm offered this over here and i'm i'm leaving actually and, and then, then they've, they've, they've come down it. yeah so keep that in mind too yes you, yeah, you gotta negotiate you gotta kind of be yeah. a salesperson yeah, at these yeah. Things. yeah. <laughs> so if you're coming up to renewal and you get an offer letter this is your renewal and you know that you can't go anywhere else because of what cortez just said yeah get those rates over there and use that to your advantage current bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 sounds good make the system work for you. yeah make it work for you yeah. Anyways, I think that's all I got today. Yeah. Thanks for uh, doing this, mm-hmm. pod partner. <laughs> I wanted to go for a, a swim <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> instead of coming here and doing a podcast, but he dragged me. Yeah. But that's what I'm going to do this afternoon. I'm going to get myself a swim cap and some goggles. Sport check definitely has Sport that. check. I have to go get it because I want to cover my hair because I work on it too much for it to turn green. With oh, we know, we know how much you work <laughs> on your hair. So I have to get a swim cap and I'm going to cover cover my head so that I look bald. Get goggles and go, go for a swim. Go for a swim. Cool. That yeah. sounds fun. What are you doing this afternoon? Uh, what am I doing? I have paperwork to finish up yep. i have to get this listing loaded up because it's before easter yep. and i want to go on on tuesday yeah oh you're so. loading it today i'm basically going to get it like all set up with burlock wow. yeah you I see need to get how organized and productive that is so productive mm-hmm. i go on my walking treadmill that's what happens oh it's so funny I mean, anytime cortez calls me and gives me updates about anything i hear the treadmill noise <laughs> in the background and i'm like oh my god if i'm on that thing i'm like i know i need to work yeah yeah well it's i mean it's a good good yeah Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I don't know where we'll be next week. We will probably be back at BZN. Oh, yeah, we have a guest coming on on Tuesday. We do have a guest coming yeah. on, yeah. He's, on a, he's a financial. Episode. Yeah, and he's a very smart guy. So he'll be an interesting awesome. one to listen to. He has yeah. uh, quite, quite. Not a, another realtor, so. No, no. 
some really good insight on the yeah financial financial market. world. So yeah. we're gonna have him on. We'll be at VZN next time, which is the other studio that we're in. Yeah. And yeah, if you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you enjoy this free content, we're just pushing it out to a lot of followers to book a call with us and just see if we're a good fit for you. Again, we're not selling ourselves all the time. It's just, hey, let's see if you want to work with us or not. No hard feelings. So book a free call. It's in the comfort of your own home. It's just our calendar down below. Um, and yeah, if you want short form stuff, Instagram is our go-to. We're also on TikTok. And if you could please leave a review on Spotify or Apple Music, we'd appreciate that so much. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thank and you. we'll see you next week. Bye. See you.